It's the evening of Wednesday, July the 31st, 2024, and I wanted to show you a news report that I just watched on NBC News Now, and um, I want to share it because it helps to make my point why we as parents cannot allow any aspect of this system in 2024 to dictate to us how to manage our own homes, how to raise our kids, how to care give our um, pets and our other vulnerable family members because they will take you on a roller coaster to nowhere with their unreasonable um, recommendations and expectations. This particular news report is on concerns administrators have about telephones in the schools. I am not going to get into the issue of kids with phones because the commercial market starts producing tablets for kids as young as age three. So we're not even going to get into the issue of what is the appropriate age for a child to have a phone. It doesn't have to be a phone. We're talking about the use of devices versus them being out in nature and being able to explore and discover within their own giftings. But my bigger issue is that it is a perfect example of how this system wants to take over control of our children, but have no idea how to raise them teach them or lead them and when things do not when they are not compliant because they are kids who come from a home where they have have had that laid as a foundation for them then they want to throw it back on the parent and make it the parents not only the parents responsibility to fix the problem that they created but they also want to blame the parent for the problem in the first place so um, I'm going to show you this clip now and validate parents, especially mothers, because it's it was just, I had to pause it because, again, with the mom shaming, um, they can't continue to do this to you all. They've never been able to do it to me. They should no longer be able to do it to you. Moms, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Welcome back. Time now for the future of everything. Last night, we showed you some New York area teenagers who went on a phone fast to see if it improved their mental health. But what are schools doing about this crisis? Principals are becoming more worried about screen time during school days. Our friends at WNBC in New York surveyed hundreds of school administrators about the issue. Chris Glorioso has the findings. Halfway through the summer, the sound of a school bell seems like a distant memory. But this summer, across the tri-state and across the nation, school administrators are wrestling with a big question. Should they change their policies on phones? Our kids are fully addicted to these phones. We've got to do something about it. New York City Schools Chancellor David Banks isn't the only one concerned phones are having a negative impact. Over the last month, more than 500 elementary, middle, and high school administrators took an exclusive I-Team survey among the... Here you can see more than half of the administrators polled say that students can bring smartphones to school, but they must be kept in their lockers or in pouches, except for in cases of emergency. Among the results, 74% of principals and vice principals think these phones are making students depressed, anxious, or lonely. 88% of administrators told us the phones are making students distracted or tired. And 85% of principals think the phones are amplifying student conflict or bullying. It is not the phone that is causing these problems. If the phones were turned off, they would do nothing to the children. It is the content on their phone and where it is coming from. How do they connect to the internet when they're in school? Is there a way to block their ability to use data usage while they're in school? The fight that happened down in the cafeteria and all of a sudden it's trending. Newburgh Free Academy principal Matteo Dotto is one of the administrators who took our survey. He told us one of the biggest problems with phones in schools is they tend to amplify conflict. When the phones were everywhere in this school building, 
Was it the case that the worst thing that happened during the day became that which scrolled across every kid's phone? Was it a race to the bottom? Yeah, absolutely. It was negative. It was violent or it was bullying. It was attacking. In our I-Team survey, school administrators also answered an open-ended question with revealing answers. The way this data is presented is skewed, but it doesn't matter because it still allows me to make my point that administrators want better parental supervision of phones, something that a lot of parents want too. But what is the barrier to parents being able to supervise their children's devices? Please see my video on the problem with parental supervision and preloaded apps. Answers. One of them writing, smartphones are contributing to increased vaping and drug use in schools because students can text or message each other to coordinate selling and using substances. Another wrote, even in an elementary school, the influence that social media has on my students is ridiculous. They think recess is boring. I worry about the future. Our survey also found distractions in school don't always come from other students. 65% of the administrators we polled said most or many students get daily calls or texts from their parents during instructional time. These kind of go together, don't they? If our kids are distracted from learning because they feel depressed, distracted, or afraid, you kind of have to ask yourself why we send them in the first place if they're not able to learn there. But even in the case of a catastrophe, like a school shooting, 80% of the administrators in our survey said it's safer for students to stay off phones and stay focused on instructions inside the classroom. The survey also revealed a mismatch in how old kids are when they get phones and how old school leaders think they should be. More than 70% of the school administrators we polled said most kids actually get their phones at 10 or younger. But more than 70% also said they believe the right age to get phones was 14 or older. The biggest percentage said 16 was the right age. And we've been giving phones to kids way too early. One school administrator wrote, I've never heard a parent say they regretted waiting to give their child a phone or social media access. But I can't even count how many regret giving their child a phone at a young age. And the result is what we want is for them to be healthy. In Newburgh, school administrators banned phones during the school day, and our survey found nearly two thirds of principals and vice principals support that idea. Chris Glorioso, News 4, New York.